That's okay. I won't use it all. Thank you. I'd like to address uh, two issues. One is the bill itself, and the second is the culture within which the bill needs to exist. Um, I believe the bill does go some way to ensuring uh, that we have the required legis legislative process in place uh, so that we can take effective action if we see that one of our banks is going to fail again. Um, I don't believe that we have the culture in place yet, as I think Deputy Spring very well uh, illustrated ver various cultural problems we have that led to some of this and I think we've some way to go before we have a culture in place that ensures for me two things one that banks fail as seldom as possible and secondly that when they do fail that the resolution process which is at the heart of this bill um, produces the best possible outcome for the Irish people so to the bill itself I broadly welcome the bill uh, and I think had we had this legislation in place in 2008 uh, we might have avoided some of the horrendous decisions that are now uh, having to be made. Um, for me, any resolution process to do with banks which are about to fail requires uh, four things. It must be timely, it must be transparent, it must be effective and it must be fair. In other words, it must have, it must have reasonable due process attached to it. Um, now, the ECB response to the bill uh, is that they are broadly happy with the timeliness and effectiveness of the bill but they have some reservations around fairness or some of the due process issues and they have some reservations around the transparency of the process that the bill will, uh, will bring into law. Specifically the ECB cite the lack of time for interested parties to react if the minister has to take action and go to the court uh, to force the resolution process they're concerned that other interested parties won't have time uh, to represent themselves in that, in that process. And secondly, they're concerned that the independence of the Central Bank of Ireland is not explicitly laid out. Uh, and so I would put those two things to the Minister to see if they could be included as the bill progresses through the, uh, through the various stages. Now, my own concern about the bill itself is in how the bill has come about. Um, and specifically, that it has not been developed with in-depth parliamentary investigation as part of it. We have, of course, had many reports. Um, the bill seems to be the, the, the product of good practice through the eyes of the IMF, through the World Bank, through the OECD, through the Bank for International Settlements, and through a collection of central banks around the globe, which is, of course, a, a good start. And the bill has to uh, come about because of the, uh, the Troika Agreement. I would suggest to the Minister, though, that the bill does lack a local context. Um, the banking resolution regime legislation which was drafted in the US um, many, many decades as well, as well as the wider financial regulations, uh, were the product of parliamentary scrutiny of the banking sector. Um, I've been looking into this over the last few days and what I found is that it was, it was the US congressional hearings in the 1930s where they really probed the bankers and really tried to understand the local context, the US context, um, that brought about the legislation. So they, they looked at the problems of the banking sector specifically in the US and the culture of the banking sector particularly in the US and they drafted their legislation based on that. It resulted in the Glass-Steagall uh, Act. Um, and the importance of Congress we saw again in the 1980s uh, where we had the SNL crisis um, and during that crisis uh, William Black expo exposed corruption, he exposed a culture of deceit and manipulation in the US banking system which uh, I think would resonate with a lot, of, uh, a lot of people in the House and a lot of people uh, in Ireland. Um, and this went on to inform the Federal Deposit Insurance Agency, the FDIC Improvement Act and the Dodd-Frank Act, so key pieces of legislation. Um, the Oireachtas has not, to my understanding, had the ability to build up a sufficiently large base of analysis and to really bring its understanding of the particular idiosyncrasies of Ireland, of our political culture, of our, regula of our regulatory culture and of our banking uh, culture to bear on this. So uh, I would just like to put it to the Minister that through the stages of the bill, it might uh, help further strengthen the bill if that process was put in place whereby the committee involved could have some real um, investigative power and, and make sure that the bill not only reflected what is seen as best practice through the very credible institutions around the world, but that it absolutely reflected um, whatever particular idiosyncrasies we may have in Ireland. I think, uh, I think that would be, would be very important. 
Um, we have, of course, had the, the Wright report, we've had the Honohan report, we've had the Nyberg report, which do throw some light on the problems. Uh, but, of course, only in certain aspects. And, uh, as we know, the reports were, uh, were time-restricted. The, the Nyberg report, I would suggest, was a, was a greywash. It sort of blamed everyone and, therefore, therefore nobody. And I would suggest, therefore, can't really be used to get into specifics about things that can be changed and things that can be safeguarded through the legislation. Um, I'd like to talk to the transparency of the bill. Uh, in the US, the, the famous Justice Louis Brandeis said that, you know, sunshine is the best disinfectant. Um, and the power of the FDIC in the US is the power of the transparency of its actions and its structure. And if you look at the FDIC, uh, FDIC website, you can see very clearly this is the process by which we, we uh, wind up the banks. This is what happens to all the different parties involved. This is how depositors are protected. Uh, this is how many banks we have going through the process and so forth. And I think that form of transparency within our own process um, would not only make for a better process, but it would give the public um, and legislators some much needed faith in exactly what was happening and who was where in the, where in the process. So I'd like to, to put that suggestion uh, to the minister. Um, there are concerns, as I said, about the uh, independence of the central bank. I don't believe that that is a real problem. It, it was a specific ECB comment in relation to this bill, but they would like to see that uh, uh, specifically uh, in the bill. So, um, as I said, I broadly welcome the bill. I think it's a good start, and I think some of the ECB, ECB comments uh, would add to the power of the bill, and I think some deeper uh, ledges parliamentary investigation and input to tailor it specifically to, to Ireland would be fantastic. Um, on the culture, I think Deputy Spring has already um, said it very well and has clearly had some first-hand experience of the, 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 some of the, the problems you've seen with the culture and banking regulation. For me, there's five areas where the culture really needs to be improved. There's the political culture, the regulatory culture, the culture of the central bank itself, the culture of the Department of Finance, um, and obviously the culture of the banks. Oh, sorry. Um, on the political culture, we all know the issues. We all know we had a Taoiseach, uh, previous Taoiseach, having uh, dinner with, or sorry, uh, playing, playing golf with the ex-chief executive of one of the, uh, the biggest vendors, the, the Anglo-Irish Bank. We had a situation where the chair of the incumbent political party had gone on to become the, uh, the head of the, the banking uh, federation and we had an extraordinary uh, capture of the government by the interested parties and, and uh, I have no doubt that is something that the minister and his colleagues watched in, uh, on this side of the house for many years and uh, hope that all of that will be, uh, will, will be put to bed. Um, in terms of the culture of the regulators, there was at the start of Shane Ross's book, the, the Bankers, there was an extraordinary account of a dinner which happened in November 2008, which was a dinner being held by the chief executives of the banks, or by the senior management of the banks, for the recently retired regulator, attended by the new regulator. It's November 2008. So this is a small number of weeks after the banks convinced, I would say hoodwinked, the government into providing a guarantee bigger than our GDP, we had a situation where in a restaurant not far from the chamber, the bankers were entertaining the regulators. Now in other countries, I've worked in the US and I've worked in the UK, the regulator would immediately be fired if he or she was caught having dinner with senior bankers. It's an extraordinary situation uh, and I hope it's one that uh, that, that, that we're not going to see again. In terms of the central bank, I, I think there were two issues, one which has been dealt with. One was this uh, tradition whereby the Secretary General of the Department of Finance went on to be the governor of the central bank. And I would suggest that being the Secretary General for the Department of Finance does not equip you to be the governor of the central bank. And, and as a tradition, it was an extraordinary one, and I, I, I would suggest a very, a very damaging one, uh, ultimately. I think the second issue for the central bank is one of expertise. Uh, the Wright report refers to this. It said that 39 of the 542 uh, staff of the bank were trained uh, to master's degree or higher in economics. Now that's 
In Canada, the number is 60%. Uh, and in the Netherlands, the number is 40%. So I think this is something, uh, something that needs to be looked at uh, ur urgently. And I don't know if that's within the remit of the minister, but it would be certainly great to see some serious upskilling uh, so that we can at least get on par with places like Canada, which of course avoided uh, uh, the, the banking collapse that we find ourselves in. The fourth one is the culture of the Department of Finance itself. And on this, there is an issue of expertise. Uh, the late Dr. Fitzgerald cited that in 2009, the Department of Finance only had three PhDs, and only one of these was working in macroeconomics. Um, now, I've worked with public servants, as most or all of the, the deputies in the House have. And my singular experience here and abroad is people who want to do the very best, uh, who have a genuine patriotic uh, outlook, um, but they also need the education, they need the training. So that may be a combination of providing programs where they can be people within the department can be trained up and deployed accordingly, and indeed hiring uh, more capability in. Certainly having one PhD working in macroeconomics in 2009, if Dr. Fitzgerald's assertion is correct, uh, is, is extraordinary and, and, and deeply worrying, and I, I hope something can, uh, can be done about that. Finally, on the banks themselves, obviously the culture within the banks uh, largely led to the situation we're in now. It's been spoken about and rehashed many times. One thing that worries me is that many of the senior teams are still in place, and I know the Minister has, uh, in the House, said that it is, it is his intention to, um, to rectify that situation. So all I would do is, is uh, reiterate my concern that a lot of the cultural legacy will still be there until you, until you refresh the senior teams. Right. Okay. So I, I would just uh, put that to the Minister and encourage him to, uh, to, con to, to continue. And just to wrap up, uh, I welcome the Bill and hope the Minister will take on uh, the various uh, suggestions. Thank you. Good morning. I know Deputy Darren